Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we have seen logic gates, bias tables and different types of bias tables available. In this video, let us see the next topic that is data representation, data types, data storage and a microcontroller system. First data representation, how to represent a data or how to represent a value in digital circuits. In digital circuits, as I told in the previous video, only zeros and ones are going to be used. Combination of zero, zeros and ones can be made to construct the next number. That's why here, this binary numbers will be having only two numbers and the combination of those will be having a base of two. And as we know, decimal numbers are having the numbers from zero to nine and combination of those will be the next numbers. So totally 10 numbers are there. That's why here the base is 10. Similarly, we have one more number system called hexadecimal numbers. In hexadecimal numbers, we will be having 0 to f, means 0 to 9, and after 9, we will be representing it with a, comma b, comma c, comma d. Similarly, it will go up to f. So, total 16 such numbers are there. That's why here it is base 16. Or we say this hexadecimal number with base h. Now, let us see the equivalent numbers in decimal, binary, and hexadecimal. If we take 0, it is same as 0 in hexadecimal. We go up to 9, it is same in hexadecimal. If you want to represent 8 as decimal, we need to represent it as base 10. Similarly, 8 in hexadecimal, we need to represent with base h. This base is giving the information that which kind of uh, data representation is this. So, to represent the same numbers in binary, how to write? In binary, if you want to represent a single hexadecimal number, we require 4 bits. For 8, you can observe, if we need to convert this into binary, we require 4 bits, means it is 1, 0, 0, 0 is the representation. Similarly, for even for 0, we very smallest value of hexadecimal number, we need to represent that with 4 bits. 0 in hexadecimal will be viewed as 0, 0, 0, 0 in binary. So, single hexadecimal number or a hexadecimal character consisting of 4 binary bits inside or 4 binary bits will be called as a single hexadecimal character. These 4 bits will be called as a nibble and 8 bits will be called as a byte. Suppose if you have 1011, it will be called as a nibble. With this, if you have some other value like this, it is a 8 bit number, it will be called as byte. If you have 16 bits, it will be called as word and 32 bits, it will be called as double word. So, for a 4 bit, we require 1 hexadecimal number to represent. For 8 bits, we require 2 hexadecimal to represent. For 16 bits, we require 4 hexadecimal to represent. And similarly, for 32 bits binary number, we require 8 hexadecimal characters to represent that number in hexadecimal. And we need to understand how to convert that hexadecimal number into binary and binary number to be represented as hexadecimal. To understand that, first let me tell you how to convert a binary number into decimal and decimal number into binary. So, to understand this, I have one more video on number system. If you go and view that, it will be easy to understand the different ways of conversion from binary to decimal and decimal to binary. Now, let us see how to convert a simple binary number to decimal. If you have 1010, 0, 1, 0, we need to convert into decimal means we need to take the weights of these. 2 power 0 is the weight. 2 power 1 is the weight of this, 2 power 2 and then 2 power 3 is the weight. Wherever zeros are there, we can neglect these and wherever 1s are there, we can take the weights and we can add 2 power 3 is 8 plus 2 power 1 is 2, this is 10. So, 10 in decimal will be represented as 1010 in binary. Suppose if we have 12, we need to convert this into binary means 12 can be written as 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus 0. This is 2 power 3, this is 2 power 2, 2 power 1, 2 power 0. So, wherever uh, the values are there, let me write it as 1, 1, 1, 0, 0 is the equivalent of 12 in binary. Now, if we have 4 bits like this, we can convert that into hexadecimal. As we seen in the table, 0 will be represented as 0, 0, 0, 0. And similarly, 2 will be represented as 0, 0, 1, 0. And similarly, 3 will be represented as 0, 0, 1, 1. Likewise, 
if you have four bits we can write a hexadecimal number with this we can see, we will see how to convert an hexadecimal number a3 into binary if you have a3 it is a hexadecimal number a3 with base h this is the representation of a hexadecimal number to convert this let me take a separately and 3 separately we know that a in hexadecimal is 10 in uh, decimal if you write the equivalent in decimal it is easy to convert 3 3 is the decimal equivalent so 10 can be written as 10 in decimal can be written as 1010 0, 1, 0 in binary 3 also we need to write it in 4 bits to convert hexadecimal to binary so for 3 0, 0, 1, 1. The, the total combination of these 8 bits representing a3 this is the equivalent number in binary now similarly if you convert it back if you have a binary number like this and converting into hexadecimal what we are supposed to do we need to split this number into groups we need to start grouping from this end let me take 0 0 0 1 as one group and i need to take 0 1 1 1 as other group so the first group will be having one triple zero for one triple zero the equivalent hexadecimal number is eight in place of that i am going to write eight similarly one 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 zero can be written as one 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 zero is written as 14 in decimal e in hexadecimal so it is e so the equivalent number in hexadecimal is e8 with base h this is how we can convert hexadecimal to binary and binary to hexadecimal then we have data types data types means how the data will be represented we have seen and if you have a combination of bits we will see the individual bits within a byte are numbered from 0 to 7 means if we have 1010 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, something like this it will be called as lsb that's why i told it will be having a least weight of 2 power 0 and this will be called as most significant bit msb this will be having a weight of 2 power 7 so the total number it will be having 8 bits this 8 bits representation will be called as byte so one byte will be having 8 bits and this will be called as least significant bit and this will be called as most significant bit to convert this into decimal format we need to multiply this 1 with 2 power 0 plus 0 with 2 power 1 1 with 2 power 2 like this as we go it will take 2 power 7 this is how a byte will be represented suppose if you have similarly 16 bits it will be called as word you can observe here 0 to 7 will be called as byte means it will be having 8 bits and if you have total 16 bits it will be called as word and if you have more than 16 bits up to 32 bits it will be called as double word you can observe here it is grouped as by bytes 0 to 7 is one byte 7 to 15 is another byte here is another byte here is another byte so 8 bits will be called as byte 16 bit will be called as word and 32 bit combination will be called as double word and we can also represent a binary numbers in negative manner to represent uh, something like minus 6 let us see how to write this minus 6 in binary first let me take a positive 6 number we can uh, represent this 6 in uh, binary as 110 it is 4 plus 2 plus 0 that is 6 take the number as it is 110 we need to take the 2's complement of this first how to take the 2's complement of this means first we need to take 1's complement first we need to take 1's complement then we need to add 1 to that how to take 1's complement of this number the 1's complement of this number is exactly complementary to that and then we, if we add 1 to this it becomes the 2's complement number 1 plus 1 is 0 with carry 1 1 plus 0 is 1 0 is as it is now we got this number this is the representation of minus 6 and these negative numbers are going to be represented with a sign number that is 1 if we need to put one more sign number here and now this will be called as a negative number this extra 1 will be added here to represent the negative sign if it is a positive number to the left side we can add any number of zeros however we want 
suppose this is a positive number i need to represent this positive number like 0000110 i can write like this now this is minus 6 0 1 0 is minus 6 i need to represent this with a negative sign means we need to add one here how many number of ones if you want i can add this will be a negative number now this is minus 6 this is plus 6 so this is how we can represent a negative number by adding a sign bit if you want to represent this minus 6 with 4 bits it will be like this 1 0 1 0 how we are going to calculate this value means for these three we are going to take the weights as it is 4 2 1 and this bit will be taken as minus bit that's why minus 8 plus 2 will be minus 6 this is how the sign bit is going to be used to calculate the number suppose if you want to represent this with 8 bit representation now i need to take this as plus 8 and then it is plus 16 this is plus 32 this is plus 64 and this is minus 120 so the last bit will be representing the sign it is minus sign so here minus 127 plus if you add all these it gives plus 122 the difference is minus 6 this is how the last bit will be used as a sign bit and if if it is 1 it is representing the minus sign only this bit will be taken as minus and all these values can be added the same similar way we can convert that into decimal equivalent and then we have the next topic called data storage we have a semiconductor ROM and a semiconductor RAM to represent a memory so ROM is a memory within a microprocessor system which provides storage for the program code we need to understand a microprocessor or a microcontroller will be having a program memory and data memory to store the program code we will be having a memory called ROM which will be storing the data permanently where the code program code is a permanent one which is stored in ROM or this ROM will be called as non-volatile because it will remain its values even when the power is discontinued and then we will be having RAM RAM this RAM is a random access memory it is also present within the microprocessor system which provides the storage for transient data and variables it is a temporary memory which will be called as volatile since when the power goes the RAM is going to not storing its value in the next instance that's why this RAM will be called as a temporary storage for a data. And this is the representation of uh, memory sizes. 1 kilobyte in the sense it is 1024 bytes. If it is 1 MB, 1 megabyte means it is 1024 kilobytes. If it is 1 gigabyte means it is 1024 megabytes. Similarly, terabyte and petabyte will be represented with 1024 gigabytes and 1024 terabytes. Generally, we are going to represent these memories with KB, MB, GB like this. As we know, 1024 bytes in the sense, it is 1024 into 8 bits. In place of byte, we can put 8 bits. That is how the 1 KB memory is going to be calculated. And then we have microcontroller system. We need to understand what is the microcontroller here and which are all the input and output devices we can connect. Microcontroller is a controller where we can connect input as well as output components. So here in the block diagram you can observe it is a microcontroller system with some input and outputs. Here we will be having a CPU. As you guys know CPU in the sense it is a central processing unit. We will be having a memory and then we will be having a clock. Here crystal clock generator is used it will be producing a continuous clock pulses for CPU and this CPU will be attached to the memory where this memory will be storing the values and there is a control program the operation of the microcontroller will be controlled by this control program which will be a software or the instruction which is providing to the microcontroller where it will do the operation and some input ports and output ports are there for the microcontroller these input ports are going to be connected with the inputs like switches some sensors and keypads like this these sensors may be having 
different sensors like temperature sensor pressure sensor and uh, light sensor like that these are giving the values to the input ports and input ports converting that value and giving to cpu and if we are measuring this sensor input from a microcontroller and we are going to represent that with a loudspeaker by measuring the temperature like 20 degree like that we can use we can connect a speaker as a output device if you want to indicate this 20 degree with a temperature sensor a microcontroller system can be used and we can represent that with some data and also we can use some switches to control the valves depending on the sensor inputs otherwise we can use keypads also as input and also as switches as input to give the input to the microcontroller and here the input ports are as we seen we can use switches we can use sensors and also we can use keypads and which are all the output ports we can connect to the output port we can connect leds or a seven segment displays we can connect some a dc ac motors and some actuators for linear as well as rotatory type of mechanical action and also we can connect relays to the output of the microcontroller and you can observe here this microcontroller will be a cpu with input and output port and a program uh, control program this dotted blocks indicating a microcontroller where the input side will be having adc analog to digital converter is there at the input side why we, why we require adc means whatever the sensor if we connect as input this sensor will be giving the information in analog type we need to convert that into digital values we need to convert that into the combination of binary values to make the microcontroller to understand to convert this analog signal into digital signal we require analog to digital converter at the input side similarly at the output side we require digital to analog converter again why we need to have digital to analog converter at the output side means the next thing what we have here is the actuator means we will be having a dc motor or we will be having a speaker or uh, we will be having some other component what we have seen here uh, to represent the data what we have measured these output devices may require an analog signal as output to convert the digital signal coming out of the microcontroller we, we are going to use digital to analog converter this digital to analog converter is going to convert these binary bits coming as output from the microcontroller to the analog signal this analog signal will be given to the actuator and this actuator can be a dc or a stepper motor or it can be any switch or it can be any relay uh, or any output device or it will be kind of display these devices require analog signal that's why we are converting digital to analog this is what the microcontroller system a simple microcontroller which will be having inputs as well as outputs